Hello guys and welcome to another exciting edition of our Lockdown TV 2.0 where we get to chat to our netball superstars and today I am chatting with the lovely Sean Moore um, who plays uh, goal shooter for the Southern Stings. Hello Sean. Hi, how are you? I'm great, I'm great. You're looking so chilled with your kids. Yeah. Do you have to look for it or is it always nearby? Well, this one's always nearby, my training one. I absolutely love it. It's nice and tight-fitted, you know, nice and comfy, and it looks really nice. I mean, this one I, I had, if I had to wear the golf shirt, I don't know where that one is at the moment. <laughs> you, do, you, do you wear your kids at home, like, when you miss netball? Are you just chilling? Are you just, like... Um, sometimes I try on dresses. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i do miss it so i mean it's nice little memories to be to try on kids and seeing the pretty stuff so yeah yeah you look like someone who's very passionate about netball i mean um before we actually started recording you mentioned how it's second nature to you you know um please would you tell us how were you introduced to the sport you know how did you end up being here what happened um so it started when I was in grade one. I've been playing since grade one, since I can remember. And I was just too tall for hockey, I guess. So I just got kind of shoved in the netball way for winter sports. Um, I always played like a lot of sports at primary school and all that kind of stuff. So netball was just my winter sport and we started going at it. Um, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it and the, the team and the environment we had great coaches as well and then as the years go by because I had the height back then I was always tall it's not like I had a sudden growth spurt sometime um but I was always tall and now I'm not so tall anymore but I mean we make it work um and then I got to high school and my high school wanted me to try and help improve their sport because they were a very smart school um didn't focus a lot on sport at the time um and me in and then we played a lot of netball got identified by some coaches kind of made things work <laughs> but yeah because yeah. you mentioned you played other sporting codes um what are those sports oh it ranged anywhere from athletics swimming i was a swimmer primary school um i played baseball and i was a very good softball player um and tennis um i played a little bit of basketball just for funsies you know just on the sideline um but yeah that was my big five Shaq, yeah. you, you're such an all-rounder you're such an all-rounder mm -hmm. and netball made it to the top of your list and all these other sports were like okay let's fall back netball has it was, it <laughs> my netball decision was a it was a tough one to to make but eventually i made it you definitely did and you mentioned the fact that um you were tall back then and then as you go to high school you're not so tall which happens you know because a lot of people start out with a different position because they're the tallest in primary school and all of a sudden when you move mm -hmm. to high school you're like one of the shortest people you're like how how so what position did you start with and um um yeah yeah i started on goal attack okay. um i've always been in circles uh, either on attack or defense but I started on goal attack and then played goal attack throughout high school I mean primary school sorry and then when I got to grade six grade seven I was still playing goal attack at school but then we started playing like Western Province action netball and those kinds of things and then I was the taller one and I didn't move as easy as what the other shorter players did so they were like okay you can go play shooter go play some keeper and then I got put in the box and that's kind of where I I stayed throughout high school um but now as soon as I got to university oh my gracious I, I, I am not considered tall for a shooter. Um, <laughs> it was very humbling. <laughs> Let's talk about um, varsity, your varsity experience, especially when you want to 
um, join a team, you know, because with varsity, obviously the competition is, is very different and it's quite tough, you know. Um, for instance, in high school, if you were the best player and then in varsity, all of a sudden there's like 20 shards, you know, it's just like, oh my yeah. gosh, where do I begin? So tell us um, about how you managed to blend in, find a team, adjust, and also just also um, still be able to maintain your craft and be as good as you are. Um, so it started when my sister actually went to Marty's. I'm at Marty's, um, Stellenbosch University. Um, my sister went to Marty's and she had such a jewel there and really enjoyed the, the camaraderie, the friends, that kind of thing. So I was like, I want to go to Marty's, right? I want to go to Marty's. If I'm going to university, I'm going to Marty's. So I applied to Marty's. And the funny thing is that I wasn't sure if I wanted to continue with my netball after school or if I wanted to take a gap year. So I wasn't sure if I wanted to study or take a gap year, take a break, you know, go overseas a little bit maybe. Um, but then I was like, okay, so here's the deal. I will apply to Marty's and only Marty's. And if I get in, then it's God's will. That's where I'm going. If I don't get in, that's also God's will. Then I'll take my gap year. I'll take my break. God willing, I got in and now I was like, okay, going to university, there's going to be a hundred chans there, like you said. I mean, it's so funny for me, every year at trials, we get there and then a coach or someone will ask, okay, so just by show of hands, who all were like Western Cape players? And you just see the hands going up because everyone was the best player in their school, in yeah. their team. Everyone, it's just, wow. It's just very wow. So yeah, I got into Marty's University. I was like, okay, if I make second team this year, I'll be happy. That's like the goal. If I make my second team, because it's very seldom that a first year walks into a first team and actually gets game time. And I was like, you know, I want to get game time. So whatever happens, happens. It's always been my, I, I know that I'm, <laughs> I'm a Christian and I really believe that God has always got my best interests at heart and whatever he wants, then that's what will happen. So I applied and I trialed and Coach Dan saw something in me, which I might not have seen at the time. Um, I thought that it was just something that people do, but I, she identified something in me and she said, okay, listen, I'm going to give this kid a chance. And then she gave me a chance and I went into, I got selected for the first team in my first year. Oh, nice. And it, it wasn't all roses and daisies and sunflowers and rainbows yeah. and butterflies. Um, coming into a first team, into a high performance setup as a, as a first year, it's, it's a lot of pressure and a lot of stress, but I was, I was like, you know, I'm up for this challenge. I'm ready. I'm ready for this. Um, and then, yeah, it was a completely different ball game because then the gym comes in and this coach takes this part and this coach does this. And then you've got your team physio and it's like all the support just to see you flourish. And you're just like, okay, cool. I can do this. Let's 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 do this. And I mean, let's talk about some of the challenges. I mean, as a first year student, and all of a sudden you're in the first team. Obviously, there are some people who won't welcome you with open arms, you know, and it's bound to happen. I mean, we girls, we go through the most, we have a lot to deal with, you know. Um, I also experienced it in high school where as a grade nine pupil making it into the first team and here's these matriculants and they're like this young one who does she think she is you know tell us about the challenges and because at the end of the day things do come right you know the girls do realize mm -hmm. that this girl is good and we need her you know but um just that transition and just um yeah talk us through <laughs> your challenges like you said just now if this girl is good and you need her the seniors they come around right they come around <laughs> uh, because they realize any netball player in a, in a high performance setup will be able to see okay this kid has talent okay this kid works hard we need her on court therefore we can't exactly put her in the space where she feels like she's not comfortable on court and that was probably one of the biggest challenges for me in first year because i was a first year because i'm playing shooter the ball is always coming towards me yeah. all the pressure when all the last 
all coming in my lovely direction. Yeah. So it was um, my first use, I'll never forget it. It was very, very challenging in the sense of I was playing against all these big names. Um, I played against people like Jasmine, um, Zygamaya, and Anai. I saw that Anai did an episode the other day. Yeah. Um, I've people like that and I I was the first I didn't know anyone's name I'd never played in such a competitive setup and I was a little bit nervous <laughs> um but and it, it showed it really showed in our first game or two that I felt uncomfortable on court because there were so many voices so many um people trying to help me and give me information that I completely felt overwhelmed and very confused mm. um and it took after after the first day of USA, then we had it out and we spoke about the, the day and what happened and that kind of stuff. And it was one of my character defining moments because obviously you go to tournaments like that to perform. And if you don't perform, there's certain expectations and all that kind of stuff from um from players, there's also universities and all that kind of stuff. You don't just go to tournaments like, oh, let's just go to a tournament you know um and after that first day didn't go how we had planned then we had a nice long team talk that evening and the next day I basically just decided okay I've had all the information come in now I need to start applying I need to start doing what I'm being told and my seniors realized that as well and they created an environment where I was able to run the circle how I saw it um and they would give me the ball where I asked for it. And there was just a, a nice a, a nice vibe. Like, obviously, I knew exactly who my seniors were and that I was a first year. I mean, it's very important coming through the ranks to respect the knowledge and the experience that they have. Um, but they, they created an environment where I felt comfortable because they realized, listen, that's my shooter. Yeah. She needs to feel comfortable. He's going to put the ball in the hoop and then we get a win. Like yeah. we all win together. We lose together. Yeah. Um, so just putting that, that comfort and that confidence in the circle, that was probably my biggest struggle. And balancing everything in first year. Oh my goodness. The academics, the friends, the oh, netball. was that? Did you actually drop academically? Because some people drop, you know. Um, it's just like they are not able to handle it to a point where by the parents are like, okay, I think you need to quit netball and focus on your studies because especially when you're still starting off, um, it does happen that, you know, you just slack a bit academically. So you tell us what, you, what your experience is like. What did you go through? So, so I really did struggle in my first year. I was balancing a lot. Um, I'm studying BSc Sports Science and the first year's BSc degree is very um time consuming because we have practicals every day for three hours and it's just is you got all your classes and then practice for three hours at the end of the day so i was running from training in the morning we started training in my first year we were training like hoppers five six okay, okay so training in the morning then we finished just after seven half for seven classes started eight so then you run from training to class for class the whole day and then our practice finished at five and then you run back to training because training starts at quarter past five. So it, it was really, I don't know how I got through it. And I don't know if I'd be able to get through it again if my year this year looks like that. because it, um, But we have this thing that we talk about at Smarties between players and coaches and that kind of stuff. There's kind of three areas when you get to university. You've got your academics yeah. and you've got your social. Yeah. and you've got your netball yeah. and if you want to be able to succeed in netball then you can only really choose one of the other two mm -hmm. so if you try and spread yourself out too thin across all three then everything kind of just drops a little bit but you can definitely succeed in at least two yeah. so then if you choose your netball then you need to choose, okay, is my academics going to struggle or are my social life going to struggle? Hey, social life must come. And if you choose, <laughs> that's how, it's what it is. And it's the biggest like thing to try and feel okay about because no one wants to, to know that their social life is struggling because of their decisions that they make. Um, 
And if you wanted to choose social life, then either your academics or your netball would struggle. So you kind of got to find that balance of when to sacrifice what and what's most important at that time. And it's also tricky because, I mean, at that age, as a first year, you're pretty young and you still want to explore life you know, um, mm-hmm. you're in this different new environment, you know, um, you're in varsity, mm-hmm. now you don't wear uniform, now you feel independent, you feel like you're an adult mm-hmm. now. So also that yeah. challenges, you know, and making sure that you make the right de- decisions also come in place. Mm-hmm. But um, tell us how you managed to get into the TNL. Um, how long has it been? Which team did you start off with? Um, so I've been trialing for TNL to make Southern Stings since I was in first year. Um, so what first year you? was 20. I'm now fourth year. Mm. Big number four. Mm. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so in 2018, I trialed for Stings. That was my first year. I didn't make it. But I was like, okay, it's fine. I'm a first year. I didn't really expect to make it because, like you said, I'm very young at that age. It's very young. And then to have to try and balance things and then Marty's and then social and then academics, it would have just been a mess. So blessing in disguise, didn't make it in my first year. Then my second year, child, and I made the, the squad. But unfortunately, I got injured just before the tournament, a couple or like two months before the tournament. And I wasn't ready to take court yet by the time the tournament was going to happen. So unfortunately, couldn't travel then. And then I was like, okay, Sean, third year. This was last year now. I'm going to do this. You're going to be in a good shape that come tournament, you're ready to go. So trialed last year, made team. Um, And then obviously COVID happened, which wasn't ideal. Um, but that's what really, I, I made myself that promise in second year saying, listen, next year, you're not going to use injury as an excuse. You're not going to use anything as an excuse. So throughout COVID, we train hard. We make sure that we stay in a good shape and then hopefully play the tournament. And then luckily the tournament did actually take place last year. Um, and yeah, that was my first year. So last year's tournament for the Southern Stings was my debut tournament. I mean, I'm, I'm listening to you and I'm like, wow, because I get to realize that every delay does not necessarily mean that it's a setback because if last year was your debut tournament, considering that COVID was involved, that you guys had to adjust to this new norm, um, you didn't spend as much time getting to know your team and training with your team and looking at your stats, which we are about to discuss now, for the TNL, uh, I mean, how is yeah. that it's, it's your debut tournament and you get a three player of the match awards in the first week of the tournament? Please explain. I don't know if it's witchcraft, but please <laughs> ask the thing because, <laughs> uh, wow. It's a lot of prayer. <laughs> no, I mean, we trained throughout lockdown and it was really tough don't get me wrong it was really hard training by yourself away from your team not in your normal training environment um I live just opposite a farm so it's like all gravel roads and that kind of stuff there so there's no there was no lack of area to to train hard and that kind of stuff so you you do what you can do then six weeks before the tournament started, we got the news that it's actually going to happen and that we're going to be training in Paul and we're just waiting for the okay for that and that kind of stuff. So I actually moved in with um, one of my coaches. He's also a dear friend of mine. Um, I moved in with him because he coached me since I was under 16. So we've been walking this journey for, for a long time now. Yeah. And so I came here and he set out programs for me he worked with me we worked on just trying to get as lean as possible um because obviously during lockdown you kind of pick up just a little bit of extra extra weight (laughs) so I had to get back shape and get explosive because like we also discussed is that I'm not the tallest shooter so I need my elevation to 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 really take off there um and yeah a lot of repetition with my shots and I don't know I decided that I was going to take a very 
new fresh look at the game because obviously we didn't do it for seven eight months mm. so i was like you know sean you're not gonna use that as an excuse either. Mm. you're just going to play what you see feel it kind of instinct kind of thing so um, i definitely reverted to instinct because obviously we didn't train together much as a team either so there's no like set plays that we could drill in before the time or anything like that you had to read your your players on your team and your opponents and then adapt so that was like key adaptability and i mean how does it actually feel for you like um is it a confidence booster when you get player of the match? Um, like, how does that make you feel as an individual, as a person, especially someone like I'm hearing you now with the amount of work that you put in way before and you actually told yourself that you can't make this pandemic an excuse, you know, and you had a whole different mindset for the mm-hmm. tournament and this is how you get paid off, you know? Yeah, I, it felt very weird, if we're being honest. I'm I'm not one for cameras or talking about myself or anything. Um, and when the cameras are on you, I mean, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. When when I go onto courts, I don't go on to look for the win. I don't go on to look for the attention or make extra shots or anything like that. I go on because this is a sport that I decided to play and I love it and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play netball. So when I'm rewarded for that kind of mindset, I'm like, wow, okay, this is actually pretty cool. You see, I can enjoy my netball and play it how I see it and still get recognition. So that was just like a, a very calming moment for me because one of the things that I I would say is one strengths would be my mindset and that's the thing that Zan saw in me when I was first year was my mindset and how level-headed I was at trials and that kind of stuff so it it felt a little bit strange to be getting play of the matches because I feel like when when I got those I was like okay Sean stay grounded stay grounded stay grounded (laughs) because I need to stay level-headed otherwise it it doesn't work out too well (laughs) (laughs) No, I must say that um, you clearly are a star. Netball is like, it's it's something that's in you. It's innate, you know, as much as you have that kind of mindset. I mean, out of the 12 games that you played, you scored 293 out of 343, which is an 85 um, goal percentage. That's that's great. That's that's truly wonderful. (laughs) Why don't you look happy? It should be 90 plus, but I mean, I, I can't complain. I can't complain. I still had a great tournament, um, but it should be 90 plus. I have very, I don't set myself a lot of like, oh, you have to get to this point and what, 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 because I'm, I find that I stress myself out of the situations that I don't need to. But one of the things that I do focus on is obviously my goal percentage, because I think that it's very important for a shooter to have a good goal percentage. Yeah. Um, it's I, I don't see the team doing all the work to bring you the ball and then you can't put it in at the end of the day. I mean, you're not rewarding your team that way. So I'm a little bit hard on myself when it comes to my goal percentage. That's why I'm like, oof, that eight should be a nine. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, it, it definitely <laughs> makes sense. It makes sense. Um, mm-hmm. Just before we wrap things up, what can we expect from you um, in terms of netball? What do you still want to achieve? Yeah. Um, um, I think I'm going to ride the nipple wave. I'm going to keep on working hard. I'm going to keep on trying to do my best and give back to the game that gave so much to me. Um, I think that you guys can expect to see me around. I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. Um, and I think that it would be a great honor to play for the Pro Tours in the 2023 but I know that that's a goal and a dream for a lot of players. Um, so we'll see who comes out the strongest come that, that time, the 2023 time. So, yeah. Oh, Sean, thank you so much for making time for us. It was a pleasure <laughs> speaking to you. I wish you all the best. Uh, I know that this year's tournament, you'll be hitting that 90 closer to 100 goal percentage. No pressure, no pressure at all. <laughs> No pressure at all. <laughs> oh, goodness. Any closing remarks from you? Um, all the players that have aspirations and want to get somewhere in netball, 
don't use any circumstances as excuses because you can always make the most of every circumstance no matter how bad it seems i like to live by the the philosophy of time passes things pass so no matter how hard things are now it's going to get better um it can only be bad for so long <laughs> but um yeah just keep working and then things will come good things will come